Hi everyone. Um, the first topic that we will be talking about is going to be relations and functions. But before we get to relations and functions, there are some um, prerequisite things that I wanted to go over. Um, hopefully you've already taken a look at the notes um, and the lesson plan for the week um, and maybe done a little bit of your own reading. So we're going to start with sets um, and we're going to go by very simple definitions here. A set is called um, a well-defined collection of object. And when we say collection of objects, it's basically what you think it would be. So you put a bunch of things together, you can form a set. The only important part of the definition here is the well-defined. Um, well-defined has a very um, specific definition. You know, so it's, it's kind of meta that well-defined has a definition in mathematics, which is very important. Um, what well-defined means is that given an object, you can say if it is in the set or not. Meaning that there's always a definite answer to the question, is this thing in this set? Now, it may seem obvious that, it, that the answer is always yes or no, but um, there are examples where you can form contradiction where you cannot answer whether something is in the set or not. And those examples actually led to the development of set theory. And if you are interested, you may want to read about um, Russell's paradox, which is also called the Barber's paradox. Yeah, so that's an interesting um, idea there. Now let's look at an example of um, what is not a set. Let's say um, my definition, I say um, A is the set of all hot days in 2021 in Honolulu. Now the reason this is not a set is because it's not well defined. Meaning, for example, if I pick a particular day and I ask, is this in the set A? It would be if it is a hot day. Now, it's not well defined because well, what is the definition of it being hot? Maybe one person finds one day hot and the other person is like, it's not, it's not that, not quite hot. So it's not, it's not well defined, meaning there is no specific way in which the answer to the question of whether a particular day is in the set A is not well defined. So this is not, not a set. But you can make a bunch of examples like set of even natural numbers. That is very well defined. For example, 71 is not in the set. Why? Because it's not even. 100 is in the set. Pi is not in the set because it's not a natural number and so on. Now there are certain notations that we need to be um, careful about. First of all, when we write a set, we list down the elements separated by a comma. Yeah. And then we use this symbol, um, which is the Greek letter epsilon to mean to say something is in the set. So how you would read this is A belongs to capital A or basically it is saying that A, the element A is in the set A. Okay. And these can be represented as diagrams. For example, um, I can make this big circle or oval Call this capital A and I put everything that is in A inside of A. So just to make a distinction here, um, this A, the capital A, that is the set and everything that is inside here, these things, these five things, these are called elements of the set. Okay, so that's one way of representing a set as a diagram. Okay. Now, um, 
let's look at some examples okay let's say a is the set of even numbers less than 11 that's one way of defining this set i can i can write the same thing as a list of these numbers now here there's a little bit of ambiguity because i said um, even numbers let's make these positive even numbers less than 11 um, so i have 0 2 4 6 8 and 10. i can also represent this as a diagram make a big circle and i put the element 0 2 4, 6, 8, and 10. All right. Now, there is a separate notation um, in which set, sets can be written, which is called a set builder notation. This is not um, extremely crucial to what we will be learning later on in the course, but it's just something that would be nice to know. Um, So it would be written in this form. How this is read is this vertical line is read as such that. So this says A is a set of all elements X such that X is less than one, comma means and X is an even natural number. Okay, so this is just another way of writing what we just wrote up there. Now, one of the most um, important tools um, a central idea in math is um, is defining some objects right for example we define the set but to learn more about the objects we have to look at the maps between these objects maps between object mean you're trying to determine properties of an object by looking at how it interacts with something else so this is always a central tool in mathematics is how does something interact with another object and studying how this interaction takes place results in very rich theories in mathematics about these objects. So with that in mind, um, Let's go ahead and consider maps between sets. So first of all, when we say maps between set, I need a minimum of, or I need exactly two sets, okay? Now, the easiest way to visualize this is using the diagram notation. Let's say my two sets are given by two diagrams and they are A, B, C, and one, two, three. Now, a map between set tells me what is the relation between these objects? So one such example would be, I connect A to one across, I connect B to two, and I connect C to three. So this is a map between the set. Now, how is that a map? Is because if I wanna get to say the element one in this set on the right, I know I have to start from an element A. Now let's say this is X and this is Y. Those are the names of the set. Now, of course, there is not just this one way of drawing this. Yeah. In fact, there is a bunch of different ways in which I can draw this map. I will show you a few. Um, for example, I could say that I'm going to send A to 2, and I'm going to send B to 3, and I'm going to send C to 1. Right? That's a valid map too. Or I could, I could even say something like... <clears throat> Um, I'm going to send A to 1, B to 1, and C to 1, and so on. Now at this point, you can pause the video and um, try this bonus problem. The bonus problem is, if you have a set X, which has A, B, C, and you have a set Y, which is 1, 2, 3, how many total 
or how many different maps from x to y can you make okay so the definition of map is just these lines that we are trying between the two sets so what you're going to do is draw a bunch of these diagrams i've drawn three of them here the question is and these three are are unique or different in a sense that well you can just look at the pictures and these pictures are different and they are doing different things so the bonus is try and figure out how many more of these maps can you make okay so that's about we are at the 11 minute mark so i'm going to end this video um right here and then we're going to continue um talking about relations and maps in the next video